Hey guys, Ruud Jolie here. It's this album's 40th anniversary, so happy birthday Iron Maiden. So yeah, as most of you guys know, I'm a huge Iron Maiden fan. Iron Maiden is the one reason why I started to play guitar in the first place. I was still playing keyboards until I watched the uh, Life After Death video, this one. Yes, I still have it on VHS. This is the original one from, I think I bought it or I got it for Christmas in 19... 87 I think See Perfectly rewinded as you would do in the video stores back in the days Anyways, this is uh, the one that I've oh man. I've watched this 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 live concert so many many times and like I said, I was I think I was I was 11 or 12 or 13 Around that age, I was still playing the keyboards, but you know, playing the keyboards that uh, all of a sudden that wasn't cool anymore. And this is the reason why I wanted to play the electric guitar. And this is actually the very first album that I bought. Not even the first Iron Maiden album, no, the first album ever. And as you can tell, it's on cassette tape. Yes, children's, young children's, this is a cassette tape. Oh wait, cassette tapes are really in and hipster these days, I guess. But the funny thing about this one is that it opens up yeah, the wrong way, basically. And yeah, man, this brings back so many memories. I think it sounds like shit because I've played it so, so often. And I remember looking at this album cover. Huh, on, on a cassette tape, that's so funny. You know, that with, with, with these small, that small print that I could still read back then. Now my arms are too short for that. Need to buy new arms, I guess. But um, yeah, this, this Eddie, damn, this, this is such a badass Eddie. And this album is actually the reason why I have that same Eddie tattooed on my left arm because to me this is the uh, the Eddie of Eddie's of course it all depends on uh, on which is your favorite album or what is your first album or whatever but because uh, I know someone who has uh, the number of the beast Eddie and someone else has the killers Eddie and they're all great but uh, yeah man memories 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 awesome so yeah this album it's 40 years old today was released on April 14th in 1980. Damn, I was three years old back then. And um, yeah, you know, a cool, cool picture of them live somewhere. I don't know which, which venue it was, but, and I don't know if you can tell, but Dave Murray here, he is playing this Stratocaster, of course not this particular Stratocaster, but he has a black Stratocaster, white pickguard and a maple neck. And I remember that back in the days when I wasn't paying attention in school and I was just drawing stuff, band logos in, uh, in, 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 my, in my lessons, in my books. And I would draw electric guitars because I was already dreaming of playing an electric guitar, you know, before I got one for a long time. Um, that's how I drew electric guitars. So to me, this this is an electric guitar uh, much more than, you know, the, 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 the fancy stuff that I have now, even though that I might prefer them over this one. Well, depends on what kind of music. I'm, I'm rambling. I don't know what I'm saying. To be really honest, I bought the vinyl later in life because back in the day, I didn't have a record player, but I did have a cassette tape deck and this is the second album that I bought and it's, you know, this album, their first album, the Iron Maiden album, also on a cassette tape. And yeah, I remember that this one was a bit more boring because it's only a front and a back, no pictures or whatever, but uh, yeah, nevertheless, 
Good Memories. And the third album I bought, I still didn't have a vinyl player or a, or a CD player. So I still had to buy cassette tapes. Also, these were a bit, uh, bit, a bit cheaper. That's this cassette tape of the Power Slave album. Ooh, nice fold-out cover again with a picture and stuff and the lyrics. Also back in the days when my arms were really short. Man, who can read this? Oh man. So yeah, that's great. After that, I got my first CD player and uh, you know, I bought my first album on CD. It was the Life After Death album. My favorite life album ever. And I have it here on vinyl. Wait, ow, oh, ugh. It's this one, let me take off this, this condom. Now this one, and I had it on CD, like I said, but later on I bought it on vinyl. And this was, uh, this was recorded at the L Long Beach Arena in Long Beach, uh, LA area, in uh, March of 2000, no, March of 1985. And in 2001, me and my uh, good friend Joey, we went on a holiday to uh, California, LA, San Diego and San Francisco. And of course we, uh, we had to visit the Long Beach Arena. And I remember that we passed it once or twice already before we realized that was the actual arena. And when, when we got in, we saw all kinds of people who were pretty well dressed, a little bit old fashioned, but uh, yeah, there was something going on, some kind of convention or whatever and when we came into the, the actual venue. And I don't know if you've seen the Live After Death video, but it starts with the Churchill speech and then that intro, and then you see the, the UK flag, the Union Jack, they zoom in on it and then they, you know, they pan to over the audience. Anyways, it's, it's all cool. And when we came in that venue, we saw the USA flag hang there. So that was really cool. And then all of a sudden we heard some chanting and some religious stuff going on and all kinds of people who, who, who handed us flyers and it turned out it was some kind of uh, Jehovah Witness gathering thing going on so that that was that was interesting but they were really nice we could stay even though that you know yeah we weren't Jehovah Witnesses yeah you know all these albums and I must admit um, I Never really got into the Blaze Bailey period. Um, you know, the Virtual Eleven and the X Factor, or the X Factor and the Virtual Eleven, in that order. Um, but these, I'm not saying that those aren't great albums, but yeah, I was, I was more into listening to other stuff at that time. So to me, uh, up until Seventh Son of Seventh Son, awesome. And then you have No Prayer for the Dying. I remember that this was the very first album that I um, could buy on release date because this album was already out uh, when, I, when I became a fan and this was the very first album that I was really waiting for and you know back then we didn't have Spotify or whatever so if you wanted to listen to it you had to go out to the record store and buy it and that's what I did on CD unfortunately I don't have the CD anymore but let's face it, you know, a cover, a detailed cover like this looks so much better on vinyl than it does on, uh, on CD. But nevertheless, so this has a very special place in my heart as well. But my most favorite cover, that's definitely this one by far, by far, somewhere in time from 19, 1986. Ah oh, man, the details on this uh, on this album cover, it's, you know, it's sci-fi minded, which I really like. And all the references, you know, you have the Aces High Bar, the Rainbow in LA, um, the Long Beach Arena is here. Uh, it's two minutes to midnight on the clock. Uh, West Ham, one from Arsenal by uh, seven to three. The Ruskin Arms, one of the first bars that they used to play at. Um, what else? Batman is standing here. Some Asimov references. Acacia, Acacia Avenue, also a song of theirs. Eddie Lives. There are a lot of Blade Runner 
uh, references. It was a huge movie uh, back then. It still is, of course. Now it's a classic, but then it was uh, fairly new. Yeah, I, I, Icarus is uh, plummeting to his death. I remember putting on this album and listening to it over and over and just look at these look at this this uh, this cover and man phantom opera house life after death is playing in the movie theater yeah man there are so many details here it's amazing wow this is by far my most favorite album cover ever yeah of course i have the boxes these are the reissues nothing too special but these are quite nice and quite heavy and these are some oh yeah of course this how can we forget this one this is their latest album you know the book of souls this is a really great album of course it will never i will never have that sense of uh nostalgia as with the other albums so i think but that goes for new star wars movies as well you know i still think that the original trilogy is by far the best you know the best three movies even though that i really like the new ones as well but yeah it's 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 different too and also goes for this music but uh, nevertheless this is a really great album and their tour was also really great and the artwork is really cool as well so this is a different artist this is done by mark wilkinson i believe his name is he also did the uh, the old marillion stuff but this has uh, you know some cool uh, let's take this one this has some cool picture discs and with some cool artwork some nice live photos and and stuff but this is this is what makes it cool yeah I'm, I'm not a huge collector i don't care about collecting this kind of stuff but yeah to have these picture discs of the first eight albums that's something that's really nice it's packaged really well and that was something fun to collect i don't play these because yeah why would i i, I have the old uh, vinyl and picture discs don't sound too great apparently i've never really tried but uh but one thing that i'm immensely proud of is this i'm a i'm a member of the fan club and i became a member because um, you know i used to play in made in united the uh, acoustic iron maiden tribute band and we did some shows in the uk and we had a drummer and his name is joe lazarus and he's uh, steve harris's nephew so uh his mom is steve harris's sister and we rehearsed at the iron maiden fan club headquarters and as it turned out it was also the place where the hangers were where they store all their stage props and amps and guitars and golden albums and even administration anyways i took pictures but they made me promise that i would not use them for uh, social media purposes so i can't show them here unfortunately but they made us into uh, lifelong Iron Maiden fan club members. So uh, thanks again. It's really great. And for the anniversary uh, issue, number 100, I got interviewed. Yeah, a four page interview, which is really cool. Super nice. one thing that is a bit strange is that one of the questions was how I uh, how I got into Iron Maiden and the story was like this I had a friend and he gave me some cassette tapes but they were copied as you know as you did back in the days and uh, you know uh, you have these double cassette tapes and you you would uh, these double cassette decks and you would just copy them so he gave me uh, uh, the copy of i think it was live after death the live album but um yeah he, he he had all kinds no wait it was the killers album yeah it was the killers album and some songs of live after that anyways um but the titles weren't correct because um 
the song Wrathchild, it said Rockchild. You know, as Dutchies and uh, back in the days, uh, especially when we were younger, our English wasn't that great. Uh, so we heard Rockchild or Killer Behind You, that was a title. Or, yeah, I can't remember that well, but I don't think that there was one title that was correct. So when I got my first CD player, I, uh, I could, uh, you know, pick out one CD to go with it. And I was browsing through all the Iron Maiden discs and I saw the, uh, where is it? You know, this, this, this Killers album on CD, apparently. Um, again, the Strat, hee <laughs> hee. Um, I thought, wow, that's a cool album cover. And I looked at the back and I saw Rothschild, oh, don't know that one. Killers, I don't know that song either. So I got that CD. But you can you can imagine my disappointment when I put on that CD for the first time and that I knew every song already. Not that I wasn't happy with the CD itself, but I only had two albums back then. That was this Peace of Mind album and, uh, and, and Killers from that copied cassette tape and Life After Death. And there were all kinds of other albums that I uh, that I never heard of. So I was like, ah, damn it, I should have gotten a different CD, but ah, makes a fun story. But anyways, in the interview day, even though that I had to email my uh, answers, so it wasn't that they misunderstood me, they, they completely changed my answer. And if I read it back now, it doesn't make any sense. They don't agree on, on copying music, which I can relate to, of course, on the other hand, if 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 I wouldn't have ever gotten a copied cassette tape of of them, then I might have never heard of Iron Maiden. So I think it's a win-win situation. The first time that I saw Iron Maiden live was in uh, 1990. I think it was November 3rd. They were touring for their uh, No Pray for the Dying album, and they had Anthrax as a support. And I was a huge Anthrax fan back then. And I had entered this competition where I could win a private concert by Anthrax. Unfortunately, I did not win that, but I got a phone call that I won two tickets to the concert of Anthrax and Iron Maiden. Uh, but I was 14 at that time and my mom thought I was really too young to go with a friend of mine who was also 14 to uh, Leiden up north. So uh, yeah, that didn't happen. So I invited a cousin of mine, older cousin, to, uh, to come along. But fortunately, that friend of mine gave me a phone call like the, pretty much 15 minutes after I got that phone call to tell me that he won two tickets as well. So he took his older sister, I took my older cousin and uh, yeah, that was my very first Iron Maiden concert. After that, I've seen them on many more occasions, uh, the Fear of the Dark uh, album and tour. Then, then I didn't see them for a while, but uh, you know, we also, within Temptation, also supported them uh, a couple of times already. And I remember that the first time that was in uh, in Paris, Parc des Princes uh, Stadium, it was with Dream Theater and with us and with uh, Maiden, obviously. And, you know, our Maiden is the reason why I picked up the guitar in the first place. And Dream Theater has been the reason why I wanted to become a professional musician, because I had read that they had met at uh, Berkeley in Boston. And, uh, you know, I, I'm from a not a super small town, but not not too big either. And I thought, yeah, if I go to a conservatory, that's maybe where I uh, will meet some musicians. Uh, I studied there with Mike. And um, yeah, so for me, that, that first time that we supported them in Paris, that was a very special day, uh, meeting both uh, some some of the Dream Theater guys and, and I met Nico McBring, because I remember that we were playing and I think my guitar was out of tune because I wanted to uh, to change guitars, even though that I wasn't supposed to according to the set list. But I turned around and gestured to my guitar tech back then that I wanted to switch. So he knew that, you know, something was wrong. And I saw Nick and McBrain, I remain his drummer, stand behind him. And I, all of a sudden I got nervous. I didn't care about those 30,000 people in front of me, but, you know, I remain his drummer was, was watching us. So during a moment uh, that I didn't have to play uh, guitar, I walked up to him and in his English accent, he was like, oh, I think you guys are slamming. And he slapped me on the back and he told me that his chauffeur was waiting because he really wanted to, uh, to catch part of our set. So that was a really fun encounter.
And I had something similar in uh, London when we supported them in the Twickenham Stadium. I don't remember when it was, 2008 or not, eight, I think. Uh, well, something similar happened. Uh, Steve Harris was, uh, was uh, standing on the side of the stage and he was also watching us. And after that, I talked to him. It's, uh, yeah, really, he's a really nice guy. And um, in 2007, when we were touring the Heart of Everything, uh, his daughter, Lauren Harris, uh, she supported us on our European tour. And at the very last evening, I think it was in Gothenburg, um, he came along. Uh, he, uh, yeah, he visited and uh, we had dinner together and there was an after party and uh, yeah, I got to talk to him, took a picture with him. I don't think I have the picture here and I normally never take pictures because I'm usually like, yeah, leave those people alone. You know, I don't mind if people take pictures with me. I, I like it, but um, yeah, usually I'm, I'm like, yeah. But that, that moment I was like, yeah, let's take a picture because we had a fun conversation. That was, uh, that was really cool. Yeah, and in July, we are supposed to support Maiden in, uh, in Poland and in Portugal and in Spain. Fingers crossed. Um, I'm, I'm not one to speculate, so, uh, you know, I want to stay positive about this whole Corona thing. Uh, but we'll see what will happen. Uh, we haven't heard that it's not going to happen. So, no news is still good news, but uh, yeah, we will see. Yeah. That's actually what I wanted to do today. It's a bit random, I realize that. Where is it? Yeah, so, again, Maestros of Iron Maiden, happy birthday with your debut album. And uh, also Dennis Stratton, because uh, I wanna congratulate Gra Dennis Stratton as well, because I've worked with him. He uh, played guitar in Made United, and uh, he's the guitar player of this uh, very first album. And that's really great. I'm really happy that I got to know him. He's a super awesome guy, good guitar player, and it's really fun to work with. So uh, this also goes out to you, Dennis. I hope that we can make some music again soon. And um, yeah, for now, I'm signing off. And maybe you should, if you haven't heard this album yet, go and uh, listen to it. It's really great. And uh, you know, you can't deny the impact that Iron Maiden has had on uh, on music, on heavy music. I sometimes wonder what I would have been doing in my life if it wasn't for this band. So uh, yeah, this I, I can honestly tell that uh, that this this particular VHS tape really has changed my life. So thanks Iron Maiden, thank you very much. And I want to wish you guys a very nice day and yeah, stay inside, stay safe, stay healthy and um, yeah, see you later. Take care and bye bye.